Tonight, he's an incredible actor, you know, from Selma, Come Away, and The Butler. He just made his directorial debut with a brand new film, The Waterman, which he also stars in. The outrageously talented David Ayelowo is on the show, and we couldn't be more thrilled. How are you? It's so lovely to see you. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm back in Blighty, James. You are. Now, you're filming on location. I think it's important you say that, otherwise I think... Anyone watching this would think, well, David Ayello has a very sparse house. <laughs> I've heard of minimalist, real... but this is like you're I... fleeing a country sort of minimalist. Yeah, well, everything in here was sort of felt a bit junky, so I moved it to the side so it wasn't distracting. I wanted you to only focus on me, James. Well, and um, how, but... how could we focus on anything else? Now, you're down there in Bristol. Is the whole family... I know that you, you travel together a lot of the time, you and the kids and everybody. Are you all there together? We were all here together, but my, my boys, my three boys have gone back to L.A. because now they're able to be in school in person again, so we thought that's important for them to do that. But our daughter, Zoe, who's nine, is here with Mummy and Daddy at the moment doing Zoom school. Because it was Mother's Day yesterday, so it must have been strange for your wife to have the family separated did the kids did you do anything special for your wife i did i gave her we were actually in london yesterday because i was doing some on location stuff there so it was the first time jess had ever been without any of our four babies uh, for mother's day and she loved it <laughs> <laughs> i believe it yeah well i, I mean and i think it's it's just because you know what it's like. You're a dad yourself, but particularly for, for moms and particularly for Jess. She is such an incredible mother. Her, her life revolves, our lives revolve so much around our kids. But I think just to feel Mother's Day being more about her than the babies was a, was a great thing. Now, David, I know that your, your own mother uh, passed away a, a few years ago, um, but you have another person who you call every year on Mother's Day... Uh, who you call your mum O. Can you explain to us who this is? Yeah, she's a, she's a lady called Oprah Winfrey. Not, not many people know her. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, she and I met playing mother and son on The Butler, and she's kind of been my mum O since. But she's, she, she doesn't love it when I call her that in public because she likes to think that she is not age-appropriate to be my mother. She is. <laughs> <laughs> And did your own mother... I'm, I'm going to get killed, James. I'm going to get killed. Did your mother approve of you of you calling Oprah Mum O? Was that OK? You know what? It's a funny thing. My mum, she couldn't, she couldn't distinguish between what was real and imagined when it came to my acting. So I remember doing a, a play called Taste, A Taste of Honey, and uh, she came to see it in London, and I had to kiss this girl. And at that point, I was already married. And my mom was sat in the front row with my dad. And literally, there's this kissing scene. And all I could hear is this whisper behind me saying, put her down. <laughs> put her down. Put her down. You are married. Put her down. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> and I had to whisper to my, to my fellow act, I'm so sorry. That's my mom telling me to put you down. And so she, could, she just couldn't see the difference. I did this film called Red Tails in which my character dies uh, in the movie. Sorry, uh, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen Red Tails. But she came to the premiere and, you know, I'd done this film, I was very proud of it. I turned to her after and said, Mommy, what did you think? She said, I don't like this movie. I said, why, what, what do you mean you don't like this movie? You die. I don't like seeing you die. Why did you die? I was like, Mommy, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. I, I am I'm okay. I don't like this movie. You died. So when I got this film, The Butler, and I, and I knew I, Oprah was going to be playing my mom, I thought, oh, God, she's going to hate this. She's going to think I'm abandoning her. I said, Mommy, I'm doing this film, The Butler. Oprah Winfrey is playing my mom. She said, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so did you speak to Oprah yesterday? I did. I did speak to her yesterday. She, uh, she was having a lovely... Um, uh, Mother's Day in uh, in in Maui. I don't even know if I should be allowed to say that. She's in Maui. Now, did you um, when and, you uh... when you spoke to Oprah? Did she did she bring up hotels at all? 
I imagine she did. I can't see why she wouldn't, Guillermo, right? I mean, the wheels must have been turning for a couple of weeks. What this is, we, we've, we've basically given up oh, for a billion James, dollars. let me stop you. I am very, very aware of what hotels. Of course you are. Of course you are. You're alive. Um, yeah. No, Oprah and I have discussed this. She and I are going into a partnership, um, and they are actually going to be called a yellow hotel. Oh! <laughs> Hey, I love a sister branch already. I absolutely <laughs> love it. I love that Oprah's hotels are the big, grand, gorgeous hotels, and the Oyelowo hotels are just a lovely boutique. They're sort of the chalets at the bottom of the garden, right at the back. But if you know, you know, and that's where you stay. Um, exactly. Now, David, you posted a photo on your birthday last month. Last month, This is a side-by-side -side of you at 15, and the other photo is you aged 45. I cannot tell you how angry this makes me. <laughs> I cannot tell you what's happening here. How are you not aging? How is this, how is this remotely possible? Is that, is that it? This is what I do, James. <laughs> uh, while I'm having dinner, while I'm having breakfast, a bit of that. Can you do that, James? Yep. <laughs> yeah. that? Ah. Oh, there he goes. Now, David, we've got to congratulate you on The Waterman, which is a movie you have so beautifully directed. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, tell them what it's about, who you play, and how it came about that you, you, this, this movie is your directorial debut. Well, you know, you and I are of the same generation. I bet you loved E.T. growing yes. up. Yes, yes. The Goonies? Of, of course. Gremlins? Of course. Never-ending story? Let, not so much. Oh. I found... No, my here's kid, my, my... Let kid, me tell you kid, this. Can my... I... Hang on. Here's my issue with Never-ending story. Yeah. When they made Never-ending story part two. Yes. And I was like, well, yes. then you can't. That's it. They were dead to me at that moment. You can't have a Never-ending story part two. It's either a Never-ending story or it's not. And that's where I was out. But the first three, yeah. I'm with you. You're making a very good point. I actually shared that film with my with my kids, and they said that we were okay until the the the, the doggy dragon. What's yeah. with the doggy dragon? So yeah, you're, 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 that was a fail on my part. <laughs> but, you know, the others, they, um, they don't really make those kind of movies anymore. No. And I, I, you know, I have my kids now, and I wanted to find films like that to share with them. And I had to always go back to the '80s, and so I was looking for that kind of film to make. The Waterman came onto the black list, which is the top 100 unproduced scripts in Hollywood in any given year. That was 2015. And, um, yeah, I, I came onto that film as a producer and actor. And then we got the financing. We got Lonnie, the amazing Lonnie Chavis, to star in it. We got a start date. And then we lost our director. And it was actually the writer, Emma Nadell, who turned to me and said, David, you've been developing this with me for about four years. I think you should direct it. And so I took two weeks of a panicked time of decision-making to, to think about it, and then I jumped into the director's chair. So it was circuitous, but I'm so glad I did it. And how did you... Cos I think you're... I, it, it, it takes no leap in my mind to imagine you directing. I think you are so creative in, in every facet of, 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 your, of yourself, really. But were you nervous on that first day as the director? Yes, incredibly. In fact, you know, I think one of the best things, if you ever decide to do this, James, uh, one of the best assets you'll have is the fact that you're an actor because you have to sort of act more confident than you are, is the reality. Um, um, yeah, I was really nervous about it, not least because I was also starring in the film and, and I worked with some amazing directors and I know what that looks like. I know what good direction looks like and... You know, it's something I didn't know if I, I, I was going to be able to do. So, um, but, you know, the thing I learned doing all those great films uh, and what those great directors do is they hire incredibly talented people. Yeah. They're very clear with their vision. 
and then, you know, watch those people make you look good. And that's definitely what happened on the water. Well, I think this is the first of many movies and stories that you're going to direct for us. I really, really do. It's completely brilliant and a job remarkably well done. Let's take a look at a clip from The Waterman, which is in theatres right now. I always thought The Waterman was just a bunch of BS. Something grown-ups told kids to keep them from sneaking off into the woods. But then I met him face to face. And I have the scar to prove it. Some of what you've heard is true. Like how he lives out in the woods by a lake called Wild Horse. That the forest has turned weird because of his powers. That he's gone crazy. But no one knows where to find him. No one except me.